Hey guys, welcome back to Fix It Friday, the weekly YouTube series where we talk about video game console repairs, mods, and restorations. And this week we have a fantastic N64. This is the ice blue version of the N64. And these were released late in the Nintendo 64's lifetime. And uh, what we're going to do with it today is we're going to install the Tim Worthington N64 RGB chip. Um, so, so for those of you that don't know, RGB is the highest quality analog signal that you can possibly get from a video game console. And the Nintendo 64 only can output composite video and S, S video. And so with this chip added on, um, we're going to get RGB. And uh, with that, you can use uh, SCART cables or HD Retrovision component cables. And you can connect those up to your television and get a really, really high quality signal. Uh, all right, so we're going to take this thing apart, and I'll show you guys how to do this step by step. Let's get right to it. Okay, so we're going to start by just taking apart the N64, and this is actually pretty easy to do. So I'm just going to flip it over real quick. And uh, you start with like a game bit screwdriver, and you've got six screws to remove. Once you do that, these little feet come off. And uh, I normally don't even bother removing the memory module. I just kind of pull it apart, and that's enough to remove it without any, any real difficulty. And from there, we're, we're all set. So now the next step is going to be removing a whole bunch of screws. Um, you actually don't need to remove every single one of them, um, but I'm going to go ahead and just kind of show you guys what needs to be taken out. All right, so that's all finished, and I just kind of wanted to show you guys some of the different types of screws that we have. So these long ones here are for holding down the cartridge slot. These kind of silver ones are for the power ports and the AV ports. These guys here do most of the connections between the main board and the plastic on the bottom. These tiny little guys here are for the RAM. Um, and then finally, there's these two with these with these locks on them, and those go here and here. Um, so there's a couple different types of screws. Um, it's not too bad, but it's always good to keep in mind where they go so that when you're reassembling, you put them all back. All right, so all of these guys here, we can completely ignore. We don't have to touch them in any way. So now the system just comes right out nice and easily. And uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and remove these RF shields, and we'll be ready to start working on this console. All right, so here we go, this is the board. Okay, so we're going to get back in and uh, get started. Okay, for the next step, uh, what you need to do is figure out what type of video encoder that you have on your N64. Um, so different motherboard revisions have different video encoders, and this happens to be a fantastic board, so that means it's using one of the later ones, which is an MAV NUS, or sometimes the AVDC NUS chip. So if you have that kind of chip, what you're going to do is you're going to use the enclosed uh, flat flex adapter and you're going to connect it up right here and then from here you're going to send wires over uh, from these points onto the N64 RGB board. Uh, if you have an earlier revision there's a different wiring method which unfortunately I can't cover in this video but who knows maybe at some point in the future I'll do another one of these and I'll post a new video on that. Alright so we're going to get started with uh, getting this attached to the chip. Alright so the first thing that we're going to do is actually adhere this uh, flex cable to the main board and um, there's a little bit of double-sided tape on the bottom of this flex cable. You just use like a little set of forceps to get rid of the... there we go. Get it ready. And now from here we're gonna sort of just tack it down and we gotta line up the pins. Make sure that they're in a good spot. And then once we're done with that we can tack it into place. So that, that adhesive is heat resistant, which is great because we're going to be soldering right over it um, in a little bit. And, uh, and you can see all these pins are nice and aligned at this point. So uh, the next step is going to be to use some flux and some solder. And we're going to go ahead and connect each one of these uh, points to the DAC. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is add some fresh flux. I already kind of added some here already before filming. And uh, conveniently, you know, this kit actually provides its own solder, which is super helpful and very nice of them to do. 
Um, so what I'll do is I'll start by just tacking it down. And then go back and forth on each one of these. And just kind of get a, a preliminary connection established here. This is really hard to do without my my uh, microscope or some kind of magnification. So I'm going to just demonstrate this on film first, and then I'm actually going to come back and uh, and go over this one more time with my microscope just to make sure I don't have any bridges. But basically, I'm just I added some solder to my tip, and then I'm just kind of working it up and down on each pin and making sure that there's still adequate flux for these connections, which so far seems to be fine. Okay, so that's connected. Um, again, I don't know if it's quite perfect right now, but I'm gonna go ahead and look at it under the microscope and confirm, and as long as that's good, then we're gonna proceed to the next step. All right, so the next thing I gotta do is prepare this ribbon wire for uh, connection with that flat, flat flex cable. And uh, this is not too bad as long as you have the right tools. And so, so what I do is I just, first of all, disconnect the right amount of, of ribbon cables and I keep them all mostly attached to each other. And then I use these flush cutters to just kind of separate out each one from each other. So if you know, look at each one of these, you can see they're all just a little bit separate from each other at the edges, but otherwise they're still connected for the most part. And then from there, what I do is I take some wire stripper and I use this 26 gauge point here and I strip just a little bit from each wire. And then finally, one at a time, I'm gonna go through with my soldering iron and I'm gonna tin each one of these edges so that they um, stay, stay solid over there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do this one by one um, until the entire set of ribbon wire is prepared in the same manner. Once that's all set, then I'm gonna go ahead and uh, prepare the flat flex cable and we're gonna attach all of these guys to each other. All right, so I just added a little bit of flux here and I'm gonna go ahead and tin all of these. Get them all set up. And now they're all ready to go. And from here, we're gonna go ahead and line these up. And uh, I'm gonna just rotate the board real quick for my own convenience. So you can see I have all of these finished. You try your best to keep them straight, if at all possible. And uh, yeah, so now at this point, I'm gonna start lining them up and I may be using a, um, a um, pair of forceps to hold down the wires and, and get them all soldered into place. I'm also going to clip these leads because they're actually a little bit too long for my liking and uh, that happens because when you tin them you end up kind of um, melting this insulator back a little bit and so that ends up happening. So I'm going to just shorten these real quick. Okay so now everything is all short. We're going to go ahead and start soldering everything onto the flex cable. Okay, so it took me a little while to get myself in a groove there, but you can see that they're all soldered into place. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna go over this again with my microscope, just because again, this is a lot easier to do with higher power magnification, but I think everything is all set and they all look like they're connected to the board. I may touch them up a little bit, add some solder, but otherwise this is generally the process that you need to take. And uh, yeah, now this is all set, and so we're gonna move on to the next step. All right, so the next thing that we're gonna do is go ahead and start wiring up some, some wires over on this AV connector here. And so this is where our RGB and C-Sync and ground are gonna go. And so what I did was just pre-tin some, some of these wires. I'm sorry, I tinned all the wires, yeah. I also gotta tin these guys as well. So that's all set. And then now I'm going to go ahead and start wiring them up. So, so as you can see, that guy was green over there. That 
bring this one in over here and we're gonna wire it up. This is gonna be blue. It's a little tricky. You don't want the wires to touch each other or anything like that. So you gotta be a little, a little bit careful when you're connecting these guys up. But again, with a little practice, it's not that big of a deal. Okay, so that's lined up. And I wanna make sure it's not touching anything and it isn't. And uh, now we can connect up this guy here. We're gonna use this purple one here for red. Normally I like to have, yeah, red, green, and blue, but not this time, was it possible. Okay, so that guy's gonna just go right here. Okay, you can see that's connected now. And we're gonna have a ground, and conveniently that's marked by a G, and I can either do it up here or down here. I think it's gonna be easier actually to do this guy. So I'm gonna do that guy. Add a little, just a little more flux, just in case. So, gonna do that. I'm gonna snip this short. Okay, there we go, that's nice and stable. And the last one is gonna be our sink, which we're gonna pull from the composite video line, which is right here. There's more than one way to wire up sync for this particular mod, but I think this is the most common method, and uh, it's worked pretty well as long as you have good RGB cables or you're using those HD RetroVision cables. This will do the job. All right, so that's basically all set, and the um, next thing we're going to do is start connecting up all of these various ribbons to the RGB board itself. Hey guys, so I just wanted to come back because um, as I continued with the installation, I realized that I had actually made a mistake. Uh, so I just wanted to correct that mistake and make sure you guys don't do the same thing if you're following along with this video. So, so yeah, you can see here that, you know, I've got my R, G, and B. That was all fine. The ground was fine, but the sink was in the wrong place. I had mistakenly putting it, put it here on the composite video line, and where it actually needed to be was this pin over here. And uh, I believe that's pin, yeah, that's pin three. And so um, pin three is normally used for C-Sync on a Super Nintendo um, RGB cable. And you can also use it for an N64. The only critical thing is you have to make sure that there's nothing else coming into that line. Now with this fantastic version, fortunately, if you go back and you look at the connections, you know, over here, Pin 3 is actually connected to nothing, and I confirmed that with my multimeter. However, there are some older versions of the N64 motherboard where it is connected up um, uh, to some capacitors, and uh, thankfully, you know, all you have to do really is just isolate that pin, and doing so just means that you have to remove a few surface mount capacitors, like I think three. Um, but in this case, with this fantastic version, that's not necessary because pin 3 is just completely isolated from everything else. Um, so all I did was just move the yellow wire over from the video to that um, C-Sync pin and uh, and yeah, otherwise that's that's the only, just want to make sure that that mistake was corrected so that you guys can follow along. Alright, so back to the installation. Alright, so everything is now back in the case and you can see that my, my AV cables are coming off to the side here, they don't interfere in any way with the uh, RF shield on the bottom. We've got this guy here, which we're going to bend, and it's going to come out this side. But in order to do that first, we have to actually remove a little piece of the top RF shield. And so that's this little tab right here. So if you just kind of bend it back and forth a little bit mechanically, it'll eventually come off. And then that will give us the space that we need in order to pass these cables through without them getting cut or damaged in any way by the, by the RF shield. So I'm going to just go ahead and do that real quick, then we're going to start routing these wires through. Alright, so now what we're going to do is go ahead and attach the N64 RGB board to the outer part of this heatsink. So yeah, just like before, we're just going to pull off this protective covering here, and this guy is basically just going to sit right about there. Okay, 
So now from here, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna strip all these wires and I'm gonna attach them down here. And uh, when that's all finished, I'll show you. And then the final step basically is gonna be to add in the RGB and C-Sync. And then we also have a de-blur option which we can add to. So, um, so yeah, we'll get all to that in a moment. All right, so as you can see here, I've attached all of the uh, wires from the DAC onto the N64 RGB. And um, I just wanted to talk a little bit about what I did here so you guys can see. So, you know, I prepared the wires in the exact same way. Um, you'll notice though that there's actually a, an orientation to all of this. You see the number one over here. Well, there's also a number one on the flat flex cable. And so that helps you line everything up. So, so the, the pin on the far right was this red cable. This was number one. I'm sorry, this red wire was number one. So I just went from one onwards. And, uh, and then also it helps it, you know, take pictures of your installation and make sure that you're wiring it up correctly. But that's about it. Otherwise, installing this is about the same as what it was to install it on the DAC, so no big deal. Okay, so there's basically a few other minor things that we need to do in order to finish things up. One is that we're gonna have to connect this set of ribbon cable over here to the RGB ground and C-Sync. That's all of these pads over here. The other thing I want to mention, and this is for anyone watching who's from Europe, is that you have these three jumpers, jumper one, two, and three. For an NTSC system like this one, or a Japanese system, you don't have to touch these, you can leave them open. But if you're using a European N64, then all of three of these need to be soldered uh, closed. Uh, I just figured I'd mention that for anyone following along who's from, from Europe. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and connect up those wires here, and you're gonna notice that I make a point of going around and over here with them. I don't want them to go anywhere near the data lines over here. You'll also notice that there's a whole different set of pads over here. So for those of you who are setting this up and using a different DAC, like an older motherboard, you actually solder to these points here instead of to here. Um, all right, so we'll be back in a minute with a little bit more work. All right, so those final connections are all set. And so we've got our RGB our sink and our ground all wired in. And um, you know, as you can see here, I took the cables and I wired them far away from those data input lines and that's just something that is recommended to minimize any kind of noise. So yeah, at this point we are basically finished. There's only one final thing that I'd like to do here and that's to add a de-blur option to this NES, I'm sorry, this N64 RGB board. So one of the things that makes this particular board the best one out of all the alternatives is that if you take a switch and you wire it to this A pad and to ground, and I've just got like a little switch here as an example, which you can kind of fit onto the side of the system. So you can toggle between a de-blur option and a non-de-blur option, and that really helps to sharpen up a lot of the N64 games. However, there are a couple that really don't look good with this option, so that's why you include a switch, so that people can toggle it on or off as they please. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and just wire that in, and then afterwards we're gonna assemble this thing up and give it a test and see how everything looks. Okay, so the final wires are connected. So this is the de-blur option right over here. So we've got ground and that A-pad connected. And then they go all the way over to this corner over here where I have a very tiny toggle switch that's sticking outside of this vent. So you actually can't even see it at all from the outside of the console. You have to come over here and with like a small pick or something like that, you can toggle it on or off. So I try to make it very small, very unobtrusive. Unfortunately, the only way to really attach a switch like this is to use something like hot glue. And I don't really like using hot glue. I try my best to never use it unless I have no choice. But in this case, I really didn't have any other way of reliably mounting it other than like say cutting the case. And I really didn't want to cut the case because this is like a really beautiful case. And this is all completely reversible. If you ever want to take this off, you can just add some alcohol and the hot glue will just come right off without any effort. So this was kind of the best trade-off in this case. It's only being used here for a structural thing and it's not even going anywhere you know, next to the, to the real board. So yeah, if anyone has any better suggestions, I'd love to hear them. Um, but for now, this was the best thing that I could come up with that both holds this switch in place and it's reversible and it's not something you're going to see. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and reassemble and we'll take a look at the final results. Okay, so we're back and I have the system connected up to my existing RGB setup. And uh, yeah, you can see that with the de-blur option on, it's really, really crisp. And um, so this is one of the unique features of this particular mod kit and it's why I recommend the Tim Worthington version over any of the others because it has this ability to toggle on a very sharp look to your N64 games. 
Um, so yeah, so this was a success. Um, yeah, so if you guys like what you saw, then uh, it would definitely be great if you could subscribe to the channel. I have videos like this out every week, and uh, definitely uh, let me know what you think in the comments below, and I'll be happy to, uh, to speak with you guys. Alright, so thanks again for watching, and I will see you guys next time. Bye!